Good morning. This is Pastor Brian. Thank you for joining me for our Bible study series, A Chapter a Day in the Book of Romans. Today, Chapter 7, I'll be reading from the Common English Bible. Feel free to follow along or just listen. And uh, let's study Chapter 7 together. Brothers and sisters, I'm talking to you as people who know the law. Don't you know that the law has power over someone only as long as he or she lives? A married woman is united with her husband under the law while he is alive. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law concerning her husband. So then if she lives with another man while her husband is alive, she's committing adultery. But if her husband dies, she is free from the law. So she won't be committing adultery if she marries someone else. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you also died with respect to the law through the body of Christ, so that you could be united with someone else. You were united with the one who was raised from the dead so that we can bear fruit for God. When we were self-centered, the sinful passions aroused through the law were at work in all the parts of our body so that we bore fruit for death. But now we have been released from the law. We have died with respect to the things that controlled us, so that we can be slaves in the new life under the Spirit, not in the old life under the written law. So what are we going to say? That the law is sin? Absolutely not. But I wouldn't have known sin except through the law. And I wouldn't have known the desire for what others have if the law had not said, don't desire to take what others have. But sin seized the opportunity and used this commandment to produce all kinds of desires in me. Sin is dead without the law. I used to be alive without the law, but when the commandment came, sin sprang to life and I died. So the commandment that was intended to give life brought death. Sin seized the opportunity through the commandment, deceived me, and killed me. So the law itself is holy, and the commandment is holy, righteous, and good. So did something good bring death to me? Absolutely not. But sin caused my death through something good so that sin would be exposed as sin. That way, sin would become even more thoroughly sinful through the commandment. We know that the law is spiritual, but I'm made of flesh and blood, and I'm sold as a slave to sin. I don't know what I'm doing, because I don't do what I want to do. Instead, I do the thing that I hate. But if I'm doing the thing I don't want to do, I'm agreeing that the law is right. But now I'm not the one doing it anymore. Instead, it's sin that lives in me. I know that good doesn't live in me. That is, in my body. The desire to do good is inside of me, but I can't do it. I don't do the good that I want to do. But I do the evil that I don't want to do. But if I do the very thing that I don't want to do, then... I'm not the one doing it anymore. Instead, it is sin that lives in me that is doing it. So I find that, as a rule, when I want to do what is good, evil is right there with me. I gladly agree with the law on the inside, but I see a different law at work in my body. It wages a war against the law of my mind and takes me prisoner with the law of sin that is in my body. I'm a miserable human being. Who will deliver me from this dead corpse? Thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I'm a slave to God's law in my mind, but I'm a slave to sin's law in my body. So that's the end of chapter 7. What did you think? What, uh, what stuck out to you? What really uh, kind of spoke to you? Uh, so as we see in this chapter, there's this idea that 
the law is there to make us aware of the sins that are in the world and the sins that we commit. So it's kind of interesting because Paul seems to indicate that we wouldn't know sin if there was no law, but it's good to have the law so that we know when we're sinning, so that we know when we're doing things that are wrong. And by doing that, we then are made aware, which is why he says that, uh, that uh, you know, is that a good thing then that we're sinning so that we can make the law known? And he says, no, no, that that's not a good argument. It's not a good argument to say, well, you know, let's do bad things so that people know what bad things are. And then we can all agree that that was a bad thing and we shouldn't do it. Uh, so... He's just trying to set up this argument that the law has a purpose. The law has a reason for being there. And that it makes us aware of when we do things wrong so that we don't do them. And so in that, as verse 12 says, So the law itself is holy, and the commandment is holy, righteous, and good. So the law is good, even today. Because it helps us live a better life. To live a life more fully to the life Christ would want us to live. Free from sin. Free from death. Free from the power of the grave. So what do you think of that? What do you think of this chapter? Take a moment to, to write it down. To share it with a friend. To share it with us on social media. I hope you are well, I hope you are safe, and may God bless you on this journey. See you tomorrow.